it is because you are chosen. And that is because I believe the more you know, the more you function. The less you know, the less you function. I pray that God today will catapult you from one level to another level. Today we are dealing with what I have dubbed, titled, War Against the Spirit of Delay or Dealing with the Spirit of Delay. I'm excited because I know your life will never be the same again. You are not watching this by mistake. And you are not here by mistake. You are here because you have an appointment with heaven. And God is going to use me to separate you with what stopped or rather from what stopped others. And the anointing that is in this place knows no barrier. In a sense of distance is not a barrier at all. Wherever you are, country, the city, the state, not a problem at all. Just connect by faith because your connectivity determines your collectivity. If you are excited to be here, Go ahead and wave your hand in the Holy Ghost and let me see you put a big smile on your face. Get your Bible. If you don't have your Bible, get your phone up unless you're using it to watch. But if you don't have your phone that you can use to read your Bible from, go ahead and lift up your hand. If you have your Bible, lift up your Bible. We are about to jump straight into the Word of God. Go ahead and say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I believe. It contains the word of God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I will do what it says I will do. Today I'll be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. To receive the incorruptible Word of, God. To the word of God and my life, and my life shall, never, shall never ever, ever be, the be the same again. Somebody shout glory. glory. So we are going to quickly take 30 seconds in prayer, praying for the word, just praying that whatever God will do tonight, this day, this afternoon, depending on where you're watching me from, he won't do it without you. And I want you in your prayer to boldly declare enough is enough. Amen. I believe today is war against this stubborn spirit of delay. Yes. Lift up your voice in the Holy Ghost and begin to pray. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for every man and every woman that is in this place tonight. Thank you for that man and that woman that is here under the influence of my voice. I know their lives shall never ever be the same again. Father, I declare and I decree that what used to stop them after tonight shall stop them no more. What used to hinder them shall hinder them no more. In the name of Jesus, your word of God shall prosper in their lives, in our lives, and shall accomplish its mission tonight it shall not go back to you void we refuse to remain the same again i declare and i decree that every demonic entity that causes people to mishandle revelation to mistreat your word to misjudge your word right now is being rendered powerless in the name of jesus makusha takaprande elevaru shatakina mahandele eskapaya Pereida antuvre zaliga barosha takapa melehendre antuvre hesatia kapaya jedegede balon travadishka nanta kabrande lehesatia pahaya. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. I'm excited. Uh, if you are tuning in for the first time, I have my phone as you can see. If you are tuning in for the first time, go ahead and let me know where you are tuning in from. It is important for you to do that so I know. Those that are here for the first time, go ahead and let the men of God. I'm here for the first time and I am watching from this country, this place, this place, this place. It is important for us to know where you are. Hallelujah.
we don't want you to feel like you're a stranger being here. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. I believe we are ready. Tanzania is also in the house. My goodness, my goodness. If you're ready, say, let's go, Apostle. Let's go, Apostle. I believe in the Holy Ghost today to do what only him can do. Yes. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Dealing with the spirit of delay. There's a reason why it's dealing with the spirit of delay rather than dealing with delay. A lot of people don't understand that there is always a spirit behind something. No wonder why Paul said to Timothy, or rather, Paul said to us, let me put it that way, that God has not given us the spirit of fear. Watch this. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Meaning before fear comes, what comes is the spirit of fear. Fear is not fear unless the spirit of fear shows up. Meaning I cannot conquer, I cannot dismantle fear until I dismantle the spirit that empowers fear. So fear, it is just a body, but the spirit behind controls everything. So even delay, delay is more spiritual than it is physical. Hence, we are dealing with the spirit of delay. Believe you me, if you were to read your Bible, you realize that there is what we call illegal spiritual roadblocks where blessings, mantles, anointings, graces, possibilities are delayed, not because they were meant to be delayed, but because there is an entity that is refusing uh, that angel that has that which belongs to you access. So that entity, it's saying no. So you feel delayed here in the physical. Yet your delay did not start in the physical. Your delay is happening in the spirit. So today we are going to address, not only are we going to deal with the spirit of delay, we are going to address the spirit of backwardness. Because delay does not work alone. When you deal with the mystery of delay, you will understand that delay has a brother, and that is stagnation. Delay has a sister, that is backwardness. And once you understand that, and you conquer that, I'm telling you, you'll be unstoppable in your walk with God. Now, let's deal with delay. Let's Deal, what is delay? Let's explain that quickly. And today, unlike other days, I'm actually going to be, uh, you know, almost everywhere. But, you know, you'll understand what I'm saying. You know, in a sense of I'm going to marry a lot of scriptures today. So I'm going to go to the New Testament, go to the Old Testament, go to the Book of Kings, go to Genesis, go to Exodus. But it will all make sense. Say, let's go, Apostle. Let's go. An enemy that you have not identified, an enemy that you don't understand, is an enemy that you cannot conquer. Christians, they shoot in blanks because they fight enemies they don't understand. I wish I had somebody to hear me. I wish I had somebody to really hear me here. Now, what is delay? Delay is when... Nothing in your life grows except your age. That is a simple definition of delay. There is no other better definition. It's not being late or anything like that, or things arriving late. It's when nothing grows but your age. You are not growing in wisdom. There is nothing growing. But the only thing that is consistently growing in your life is your age. You know you are delayed, 
when your age is the only thing that is growing in your life. And the devil is uh, a liar. Amen. Delay is the enemy of prophecy and progress. Mm -hmm. If there is an enemy of prophecy and progress, is no one but delay. Mm -hmm. Delay is the enemy of prophecy. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people with prophecies in their lives. I'm talking about great prophecies with nothing to show for it. So many words spoken over their lives by great men and great women of God. God revealing certain things to them, either by dreams or through dreams, even through visions, some confirmations. But guess what? With all that, still, there is nothing to show for it. Does it mean God did not speak through that servant? God spoke. But how come things are not materializing? Delay. Delay is so stubborn that until you address delay, delay will never stop dealing with you. And of course, there are people who will love to justify delay in their lives by certain quotes that sounds good, yet not biblical. And after today, you need to throw them out of the window. Those quotes. Quotes like, delay is not denial. It sounds good but it's not biblical. Amen. And a lot of people will justify why they are delayed using that statement. 50 years later, the person is still saying delay is not denial. 70 years later, delay is not denial. The person dies saying delay is not denial. The devil is a liar. When delay is not addressed, when delay is not confronted, Delay becomes denial. A lot of people are denied that which was meant for them because they failed to deal with the delay. And as a result, delay is contending with whatever that concerns those people. I don't know if you guys are, underst are understanding what I'm saying. Things that were supposed to take you five years to build will take you 15 years. And even in that 15 years, you'll be swimming in the pool of debt. You close here, something big opens. I don't know if these people are getting what I'm saying. You, ten, you take 10 steps forward to take 50 steps backwards. So even if you, it looks like you are making progress, you'll wake up to realize that you are not making progress. The, you see, somebody say, go deeper, Apostle. There is a huge difference between backwardness, right, and confirmation of prophecy. Because I know I once taught on sometimes to know that God himself is doing something is what you are dealing with. What you are dealing with will be more like a confirmation, right? So what you are dealing with might be a doorway to your next season where I said that every time you receive a prophecy, hell will break loose. And once hell breaks loose, you must know that indeed that prophecy is from God and that becomes a double confirmation. Let me explain this, right? There is a huge difference between a confirmation and delay. You can receive a prophecy and receive confirmation and confirmation moves from being confirmation and becomes delay. Okay. When Mary, the mother of Jesus, received the news that she is going to carry a baby, and his name is going to be Jesus. She asked the question, how can these things be? And the angel of the Lord said, the power of the most high shall overshadow you. I will put it in a way that church people will understand. The Holy Ghost shall come on you. Imagine before that, the angel of the Lord said a statement. I want you guys to understand this. The angel of the Lord said a statement. And that statement was, thou art highly favored. So she's highly favored. The Holy Ghost is going to come on her in a sense of impregnant her. Now, Mary goes home. As we read the Bible, we realize that Joseph wants to divorce Mary. You already missed it. She just had an encounter with an angel. But when she goes home, things are upside down. I don't know if you are hearing what I'm saying. 
I thought after encountering an angel and an angel telling you thou art highly favored, all things in your life will start making sense. And before the encounter with, an, with the angel, Joseph and Mary were fine. But after encountering the angel, that's when Joseph wants to divorce Mary. That was not delay. That was a confirmation. I don't know if you guys understand what I'm saying. That's why the angel of the Lord also appeared to Joseph to say, don't worry, what you see there is the hand of God. Amen. Delay is then different from confirmation. Amen. Delay is when you receive a prophecy. Nothing fights you, but nothing changes. <laughs> Glory be to God. That's why you must know how to war. You must know how to fight. When you read the Bible in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 18, can you read it? Can you read it? I'm just passing by. Can you quickly read it, please? 1 Timothy 1, 18, quickly. Of 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. Yes. This charge I commit unto thee. This pangralia I commit unto you. This Sa command I give unto you. Different visions. Let's go. Son Timothy. My son Timothy. According to the prophecies. According to the prophecies. Which went before on thee. Which went ahead of you. That thou by them. That you using them. The prophecies, uh huh. Mightest war a good warfare. Mightest war, fight a good warfare. So he's going to a spiritual war, but what he's going to use as weapons is prophecies. Because prophecies can be suspended. Oh my God. Prophecies can be delayed, and prophecies can be denied access. Until you realize and know what God has said about you. And take that which God has said about you. Use it as a weapon in the spirit. You will remain in a place that God himself did not put you in. And you will be singing this quote that people sing. And the devil today, never allow that quote to come out of your mouth. Delay is not denial. The devil is a liar. And this kind of a code makes people wait for defining moments. That will never come. Amen. Say glory, somebody. Glory. You can receive a prophecy from God and still be delayed. Let's go to the Bible now. We are about to take off. No, no, that was a foundation. As a matter of fact, we have not done anything. Let's take off. Genesis chapter 15, and I want us to read verses 13, where it all began. The book of Genesis was known to be the beginning, was known as the takeoff of the Bible. It's the spinal cord of the Bible. Just like you can't stand with your, without your spinal cord, the Bible cannot stand without the book of Genesis. Imagine if you were to read the Bible, and all of a sudden you start from Exodus. And you all of a sudden see Pharaoh killing babies and there's Moses. The next thing, you're going to be confused, isn't it? So thank God for Genesis. Please read for us. Thank you, Apostle. The book of Genesis, chapter 15, verse 13. Yes, ma'am. And he said unto Abram. Who? God. Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in, the, in a land that is not theirs. Now, in, um, are you done with that? particular one or is, is still going to it's still continue okay. apostle. and shall serve them and they shall afflict them yes, 400 years 400 years now this is God talking to Abraham about the children of Israel in Egypt to say they are going to be afflicted they are going to be in captivity for how many years church 400 years. for 400 years I want you to understand that this is not an angel talking to Abram. This is not a prophet talking to Abram. This is not even Melchizedek talking to Abram about this. But this is God. God is telling Abraham that your seed, your children's children's children, will be in captivity in Egypt for 400 years. God gives him a time frame. But let's hear 
How long did they stay in there? Exodus 12. And God bless everybody that is giving. Amen. As you give, those that are giving, I see a lot of people that are giving there. May God break this chain off your neck. Chain of delay. May this padlock be broken off your life. Yes, read for us, please. Do we have it on the screen? Exodus chapter 12, and she has to find it prophetically. Verse 40, my daughter. Four zero. Exodus chapter 12, verse 40. That's correct. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel yes. who dwelt in Egypt uh -huh. was 430 years. My God. My God. I don't know if I have people living in the studio here, but I feel yes. I'm on my own. In Genesis chapter 15, let me talk to Kani, son of Dr. Miss. In Genesis chapter 15, the Bible tells us that God said 400 years. In Exodus chapter 12, they stayed 430 years. Meaning, they stayed 30 extra years. And ladies and gentlemen, 30 years is a long time. 30 years is not 30 days. 30 years is not 30 months. 30 years is so long that a baby can become a man. Amen. A baby can become a woman. Amen. Somebody can get their lives together Amen. in that period of time. Somebody can build from nothing and move and get to something in 30 years. 30 years, that was not necessary. That God did not announce. Uh, yeah. Some of you, you think just because God spoke, delay is going to back up. Delay is going to say God spoke. Delay loves it when God speaks. Because delay knows, I can't stop God, but I can stop you. Then delay deals with you. Uh, uh, I wish I could talk to somebody right here. So, 30 years was stolen out of their lives because of a spirit called delay. And if I was to break it down here and explain why the delay happened or rather why the delay took place, it's going to take me forever, but I can pass by there. And I would do it for Stephen Pride, uh, a peer is there, sorry, who's saying, help me, Apostle. They were simply delayed because when their deliverer, Moses, showed up, they rejected him. One will say, what time did they reject him? Remember, Moses grew up in the palace as a son of a king. Of course, stepson, but son of a king, right? He saw people fight. We know the story. Killed one. Praise the Lord, everybody. Because he was a Hebrew. Defended his own. Right? Because it was a Hebrew vis an Egyptian. We know the story. He killed an Egyptian. Buried him. Hid him. The following day, a Hebrew was fighting a Hebrew. And then he came in to stop them from fighting. That very day was their day of deliverance. How do I know that? Watch what the guys say as soon as he stops, uh, he tries to stop them from fighting. They say, who made you deliverer over us? Who made you our deliverer? You see that now? Who made you our deliverer? Don't you think we know what you did yesterday? We are going to mess you up. We are going to expose you. And from that time, Moses ran. And how long did he stay with Jethro? 40 years. So Moses was their deliverer. So when they rejected him unaware, when Moses went to stay with Jethro, the meeting, I'm, I'm not sure if people are here. Their time had come. So delay can hit you because you missed somebody 
who carried your deliverance? Uh, what I said there was too deep. Uh, let me go back. Uh, <laughs> I need to go back there. I wish I had people who were excited on Zoom. I think people are excited. It's just that Sister Beverly has put me in the wrong platform. Please put me in the right platform where people's spirits are excited and are ready for what Apostle has for them today. You can be delayed because you are missing or you have missed somebody that carried your answer. Jesus came out of Jerusalem and wept and they asked him, why are you weeping? He said, for they had missed their hour of visitation. Meaning there were people there who were sick. That Jesus' presence marked their season of healing. But they were not able to pick it up and as a result, they thought Jesus was like any other prophet. Meaning he's coming, he's passing, another one will come. Yet Jesus was their final answer. They are men and they are women who are God's methods. That once they come in your life, your inability to locate them will cause you to be in one place forever. I wish I could go deeper, like seriously. I wish I could go deeper, like seriously. Like, ser like seriously, I wish I could go deeper. Because of time, let me continue. So delay is so merciless that no matter how long you have been delayed by delay, delay will not wake up and say, I'm leaving you, I've delayed you, it's enough. And for you to show mercy to delay is to give up your destiny easily. Is to give up your, the destiny of your children easily is to give up the destiny of your children's children easily. When it comes to delay, fight delay with everything that is in you. Because if you don't stop delay, delay will stop you. And some of you are fighting delay that dealt with your mother. I call this type of a delay, inherited delay. Delay does not respect your educational background. As a matter of fact, delay will want you educated. Your degree certificate will turn into a paper because of delay. It will become a decoration. <laughs> you will forget that you are educated or certificated because of delay. Delay will find an educated woman, a man who's educated, and you will see and look at their lives, living like they've never went to school. Do, delay does not respect anointing. What are you talking about? You can be anointed and delay will deal with you. No one is immune to delay. Delay will test you. Delay will challenge you. But you need to be able to confront and deal with the delay. I'll give an example. Only few people are going to understand it. I will repeat. Only few people are going to understand it. I will say it for the last time. Only few people are going to understand the revelation. And you not understanding the revelation does not mean the revelation is wrong. You will grow into understanding it one day. God gave a promise, or rather a prophecy, a prophecy to Abraham. That Abraham, you are going to have a baby. But it took Abraham 25 years to see that prophecy come to pass. Are we together? Amen. Now Abraham had a baby. His name was Isaac. Of course there was Ishmael. But Ishmael was not a child or uh, a baby of the promise. Child of, from, of the promise. Isaac was. Right? So let me focus on Isaac here. Then Isaac was born after 25 years. Isaac met Rebekah. And guess what? It took Rebekah and Isaac 20 years to have children. And that was Jacob and Esau. And Jacob later on wanted a woman. Remember there was Leah and there was Rachel. And the woman of his dreams. It took him 14 to 15 years to have a child with that woman. As a matter of fact, to be correct, it took him 16 years. Now, if you look at the delay, it did not start with him. When you look at Isaac, his father, he was delayed. But Isaac was not the first one to be delayed in their family. The father of Isaac was also delayed. 
it took Abraham 20, 25 years. Yeah. It took the son 20 years. It took the grandchild, which is Jacob, 16 years. Yeah. <laughs> they are not hearing me. <laughs> uh, God can speak about your life and delay refuses. Okay. Let's go to the Bible. In fact, let me quickly explain this. Ah, let's go to the Bible. No, no, let's go. Because if I explain it, they would think it's me saying it. Go to the book of 1 Kings chapter 19. I wanted to explain this story, but it's okay. We read from verse 15. Verse 15, 16, 17. Give me 15, 16, 17. Because if I explain the story, it will be like he's just saying it. It's not really the way it is. Let's go. The book of 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 15. Yes, ma'am. And the Lord said unto him. And the Lord said unto him, who? Elijah. Uh -huh. Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. Uh -huh. And when thou comest, uh -huh. anoint Hazel. Anoint Hazel. To be king over Syria. To be king over Israel. Is it Syria? Syria. Yes, Apostle. Syria. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. And Jehu, the son of... Oh, no, Jehu has to be in Israel. Yeah, let's go. Uh -huh. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi. Nimshi, that's correct. Shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. That's correct. Uh -huh. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, to be a prophet after you. Uh -huh. Just continue. Of Abel Meholam, mm -hmm. shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass mm -hmm. that him that escapeth the sword of Hazel uh -huh. shall Jehu slay. Jehu shall slay. And him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu uh -huh. Eli shall Elisha slay. Elisha shall slay. Kandusha. Mm. Sit down. Uh, I feel the anointing. Let me explain this quickly because we had to read it for the sake of reading it. God spoke to Elijah when Elijah was in the mountain. That when you come down and when you go down, anoint for me Hazel. Anoint for me Jehu. But as for Jehu, Jehu is to be king over Israel. What is, is, what is Israel? The chosen nation. Mm -hmm. And Elisha, the son of Shepherd, mm -hmm. he's going to be a prophet after you. Mm -hmm. Remember, the reason why God said this, it was after when uh, Elijah had thought, or rather was saying to God, he's the only prophet left. Mm -hmm. And God said, don't worry. There are about 7,000 prophets mm -hmm. that have not yet bowed to Baal. Mm -hmm. So you are not alone. And as a matter of fact, when you go down, anoint for me Jehu. Anoint for me Hazel. These two will be kings. But as for Elisha, Elisha the son of Shepherd will be a prophet. Mm -hmm. The Bible declares that Elijah went down. And guess what? He did anoint Elisha. He did anoint Hazel. But he forgot to anoint Jehu. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like throwing my pen up. I feel like throwing my pen up. Because if I was in church here, I would be jumping. The, the church already missed it. Can you please move me? Get me to people who are excited. People who are full of the way. Don't, don't, don't get me to people who have no idea of what I'm talking about. I don't have that time right now. I don't have. I need people who understand now that it is a matter of now or never. It is a matter of now or never. Imagine God spoke. The church is not hearing it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. God spoke, but when the prophet was down, he anointed Hazel. He anointed Elisha and forgot you. How do you forget to anoint a king? And not just a king. Remember, Jehu, the son of Nimshi, was supposed to be a king over Israel. How do you forget? How do you miss a king? Spirit of delay. God can release men to bless you. God can release men, women to anoint you. But delay can take place. And as a result, the person who's supposed to bless you will not see you. You can apply for promotion. Apply for a job. And the person who's supposed to approve your application will not see your application. <laughs> according to God it's your time but when delay fights you delay fights everything about you 
It is not that Elijah did not hear. He heard from God. Hence, we see him anointing the two. To an extent that God went as far and he said, as far as saying that the one who will escape the sword of Hazel, the sword of Jehu shall slay. The one who will escape the sword of Jehu, Elijah, Elijah's sword will slay. If you are hearing me and you are under the sound of my voice, I want you to go ahead and prophetically agree with me by typing on your comment section, enough is enough. And that enough is enough is not just for you, but that enough is enough is for you and those that are connected to you. That enough is enough is for you and those that will be connected to you. Whether it's your children or whether it will be your children's children or your children's children's children, I want you to go ahead and put it on your comment section and go and say enough is enough. Hallelujah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count to three. And as I count it here on the uh, studio, here in the, in, the, in the office, I want you to say enough is enough out loud. One, two, three. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Tonight we come against the spirit of delay in the name of he that died and resurrected on the third day, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We paralyze the spirit of delay tonight. We dismantle the spirit of delay. We render the spirit of delay powerless in the name of Jesus. Delay will never be persistent ever again in your life. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Glory be to God. Watch this now. Imagine, pay attention everybody. Imagine Elijah anoints all of these ones and he missed the king. I'm sure you guys are not understanding. He was not to be anointed to be a servant. Thank you, Uncle Peter. To be a king. And this is the word of the Lord. Go and anoint for me, Jehu, to be a king over Israel. Not just a small nation. If it was a nation maybe that he did not like, it would have made sense. But this is Israel. And guess what? After two years, nothing. Five years, nothing. Seven years, nothing. Elijah was taken to heaven by the chariots of fire and a wild wind. Knowing he was supposed to anoint Jehu, yet went to heaven without anointing Jehu. Jehu has a prophecy. Jehu has an anointing. But the anointing has not come on his head. He probably knows I'm born for greatness. He probably feels something is wrong some way. And maybe sometimes it was like some of you. Delay is not denial. And the man who was supposed to anoint him went to heaven. <laughs> and guess what happens? After 14 years, 12 to 14 years, the Bible says, Aiga Malendre, Vedesca Dusha. Elisha. Now, remember. Remember the prophecy that was given by God to Elijah concerning Jehu. And it took Elisha. I want you guys to understand. Elisha is the same person who was supposed to be anointed in the same season with Jehu. It took Elisha after 12 to 14 years to remember by the Spirit of God that there is a prophecy that is overdue on this man's life. And then he went and appointed one of the sons of the prophet. And he said, take this flask. Another vision says, take this horn of oil. Go and anoint Jehu. But may I present to you that delay can frustrate somebody. A lot of people feel the anointing. 
A lot of people are operating outside their assignment, not because of poverty, but because of a spirit called delay. Remember, Jehu was to be king, but he got so frustrated because of delay that he joined an army of Ahab and became a soldier. A king became a soldier. <laughs> he was so frustrated. How many destinies were, be, uh, were redirected because of delay? How many destinies were rewritten because of delay? I always told you, and I will tell you again, Amen. that there is always a transition between creation and formation. And let me quickly break that one uh, very fast for those that are you know, not catching it. So there is always a, a, a transition between creation and delay. So this is creation, this is, no, sorry, formation. So this is creation and this is formation. And this is transition here in between. Transition means a change, right? A swapping. Are we together? So there's always a change, right? Rather, uh, a shift between creation and formation. Don't worry, it's not deep. I'm going to explain it quickly. Now, Creation, or rather to create, simple means to make something out of nothing. But to form means to make something out of something. So before you were formed, you were created. How do I know that? Remember Genesis chapter 1, 26, let us create men in our own image. Verse 27, God created men in his own what? Image. After his likeness, God created he, them, male and what? And female. Say glory somebody. But in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, God grabbed soil and formed men out of the dust of the ground. Mm -hmm. So we have Genesis chapter 1, men who's created. Mm -hmm. And we have Genesis chapter 2, men who's formed. Mm -hmm. But God gave dominion to one of these ones. Mm -hmm. I want to present to you that it was not Genesis chapter 2, men that God gave dominion to. It was Genesis chapter 1, men. Meaning, Adam is Adam as long as he's operating like Genesis chapter 1, men. So God can say you are this in creation. Yet when you are formed or you are born in your family, you are born in a family where you are something different. David was created to be a king. When God looked at David, David was a king. He saw David in a palace. But when formation took place, David was a sheep boy. His destiny says king. But his formation current state says look after the sheep. It took a man of God called prophet Apostle Mizim's Rocket and Great. Oh, sorry. That was my vision. Sorry. That was a wrong vision. It took a man called Prophet Samuel to go and announce David to David. To say, David, you are not supposed to be where you are. According to God's calendar. This year, you are to be anointed to be a king. I don't know if they are understanding what I'm saying. He has never been in a palace in a sense of ruling. His father is not a king. He does not know how to speak like a king. He does not know how to command like a king. But it is then the anointing that gives one an ability to function under an unction. Kingship unction. Are we together? So what happened here? What happened was Samuel did not anoint David to become a king because David was just a sheep boy. No, David in creation, he was a king. Amen. That's why Jabez refused to be ordinary like everyone in his family. Amen. The Bible says, and Jabez prayed a prayer. Oh, yes, why was he praying a prayer? Because everyone was normal in his family. What? But the Bible says when it came to Jabez, Jabez prayed and said, oh God of Israel, Change my state. Enlarge my territory. And bless me real good. And the Bible says, and God heard his prayer. Are you hearing? To Jeremiah, he said, I knew you before you were formed. You see then? Meaning, I concluded, I'm done with you. But where did I finish? Before you were born. Meaning, I finished in creation. But now, when you are formed now, I have to make sure that you are aware of that which I put in you before you were formed. So, some of you are under the influence of my voice. In creation, God sees a different person. In formation, you are something else. You are not a beggar. You are not a borrower. You are a lender. 
Oh, you are not hearing what I'm saying. That's why I always say to you, it starts in the spirit. Amen. Daniel himself, Kuna Mande, Daniel himself was in prayer for 21 days. And when the angel of the Lord arrived, appeared to him, the angel of the Lord said, from the first day, you set your thoughts to seek understanding. Amen. Thy prayers were heard and God answered you. Amen. Meaning your answer left God's hand on the first day you prayed. Amen. And Daniel was flabbergasted. How come you are coming after 21 days? Mm. He said, it was not my fault. Mm. It was the prince of the kingdom of Persia. Mm. I want you to understand that the prince was not stopping Gabriel, but the prince was stopping Gabriel to stop Daniel. Mm. Ah, they didn't hear it. So delay in the spirit. These entities, these principalities, wickedness, rulers, powers, mm. fight angels that are coming with your answer, mm. not to stop the angel, but to stop you. God bless everybody that is giving. That's why you'll find somebody saying this year is my year. And they will come up with nothing to show for it. Every year is your year, but there will never be anything tangible. You are in church, churching all the time. You are under a great man. It's not even the man of God's problem. Until you identify that there is a problem here, that problem will never change. You can't deliver a man who does not even know they need deliverance. Mm. It is very difficult to help somebody who does not know they need help. Mm. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Then Elisha gave a horn of oil to one of the sons of the prophets. You know what he says? He says, run. Go and anoint Jehu. His prophecy is overdue. That when you anoint him, don't delay. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Read King, New King James. New King James. New King James. I want to give you a scripture now. In New King James. Because uh, King James will say, tarry not. But New King James will give us what we're looking for. New King James, 2 Kings chapter 9. Remember, the prophecy was given in 1 Kings chapter 19. He is being anointed in 2 Kings, mm. chapter 9. <laughs> chapter 9, read verse 3 for me. Book of 2 Kings, chapter 9, verse 3. Yes. Then take the flask of oil uh -huh. and pour it on his head uh -huh. and say, Thus says the Lord, uh -huh. I have anointed you uh -huh. king over Israel. Uh -huh. Then open the door uh -huh. and flee. And do not delay. And do not delay. Why? Because already there was a delay. Ah. Delay is dangerous. Heaven can agree with you and say yes to your blessing. Delay will contend with that. David asked the question and said, how long, O oh God? How long will my suffering remain? He didn't say delay is not dinner. He asked the question, how long? And the question of how long is actually addressing delay. By this time, I should not be remain, uh, suffering. I should not be experiencing the pain. By this time, I should not be here at home not working. By this time, I should not be taking taxes. By this time, I should not be begging. By this time, I should not be home without anything to show for it. Do you think building a house as a child of God at 101 years old or age is an achievement, is a blessing? No. No. Let me break it down so you understand, so you understand times. According to Genesis, the days of men are what? 120. Are we together? Even the book of Psalm. So man is to live up to at least what? 120. Watch this now. From zero to 30 years. Those years, we call them uh, preparation years. These are your years of preparing. Preparation years. Okay? From 30 to 60, we call them building years. So now, if you are 21 and you feel like life has dealt with you, wake up from your sleep. Preparation years is 0 to 30. 30 to 60 is your building years. 
60 to 90 is your resting years. Mm -hmm. 90 to 120 is your departing years. Mm -hmm. Meaning you are now ready to say, God, I'm coming. That's why Jesus started his ministry at the age of what? From 0 to 30, Jesus was being prepared. David became a king after what? 30 years. You know why? Because from 15, when he was anointed to 30, God was building capacity. He was preparing him. So from 0 to 30, one is being prepared. From 30 to 60, one now is given a platform, an opportunity to build. To manifest now what is in them. The devil is a liar. I refuse on your behalf. I dismantle that spirit on your behalf. What stopped your mother will not stop you. I come against the spirit of backwardness. The spirit of stagnation. Whatever is holding you back right now, let it release you. If it is anger, I release you from it. If it is unforgiveness, I release you from it. If it is ignorance, I release you from it. If it is lack of substance, finances, I release you from it. If it is lack of vision, I release you from it. In the name of Jesus. Delay will cause you to be admired. And it will end there. Okay, let me explain. Say explain, Apostle. You can be beautiful. Having all the products to, you know, put together a nice makeup, you know. Having all these cosmetic things. And every man that sees you will admire you. But no one will say, I want to marry you. Delay is dangerous. I hate delay with passion. From the time of John the Baptist until now, so says the Bible. The kingdom of God suffered violence. Violent. And the violence took it by force. Some of these things you need to catalambano. Some of these things you need to paralambano. Yeah. To catalambano means to take, to seize by force. Yeah. You can't stretch your hand uh, in some of the things and say, if it's mine, it will come. <laughs> if Daniel had that mentality, Daniel would have missed a revelation of the times to come. Yeah. But because he understood, I'm praying and I'm not stopping until something happens. So should we continue and let me wrap it up here. I don't know if people still want Apostle to continue. If you want Apostle to continue, go ahead and put fire emojis on all these platforms. Whether you are on YouTube, whether you are on Facebook, I want you to put fire emojis. God bless everybody that is giving. We have so many people that are giving. Uh, I see here we also have A.A. Uh, a. Smith saying, I break the spirit of delay through this offering. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, you know, we have not called offering, but the spirit of God in him is telling him what to do. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. I want to see fire emojis. I'm seeing fire emojis on, uh, on, uh, on YouTube. We want to see fire emojis on Facebook. Perhaps we have not been live for a long time on Facebook, so... There are few people who are, okay, there we go. Tati is understanding it there. Fire emojis. Facebook, I want, I want to see fire emojis. Our God is a consuming fire. Don't stop. Fire penetrates. Fire devours. Fire destroys. Fire consumes. Fire penal beats. Fire destroys. Fire fires. <laughs> I'm telling you now, Amen. fire will deal with you. That's why if you hear people saying, I don't go to churches that shout fire, fire, <laughs> you must know. You didn't hear me. You must know. It's not them trying to discredit or anything like that. No, 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 no. There is something about this fire. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, 29, our God is a consuming fire. So every time we call on fire, we are calling on God. Oh, my goodness. So people are asking, how do they give? You can use our details that are on the screen. You can go on the website, and I believe it will help you. I want to see fire emojis. Facebook, I'm sure they are, they are wondering, what is fire emojis? Can somebody go on Facebook and start putting fire emojis there? <laughs> 
Delay is not your portion. I want to show you one more scripture. This scripture will blow your mind. This will blow your mind. Exodus 32. This will blow your mind. This will shock you. It's um what 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 chapter is that? I'm I'm trying to see if King James will work. Just a second. Yep, King James will work. Yep, we can go King James, no problem. Yep. Yep, let's go. Thirty two, verse one. The book of Exodus chapter thirty two, verse one. That's correct. And when the people saw that Moses delayed when the people, it's important for you to pay attention. There. So that Moses did what? Delayed. Moses delayed to what? To come down out of the mount. mount. The people gathered themselves together unto who? Aaron. Aaron. And said unto him, up make us gods. You see that now? Amen. We shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of, G of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. Mm. Now, don't, don't remove it, uh, Uncle KB. Just put it there. Please uh, be seated, my daughter. Watch this. Moses delayed. Yes, and the people went to Aaron and said, make us gods of silver and gold mm. so that we may offer offerings. Mm. <laughs> The Bible says they began to take the gold. They began to take their earrings. Hear me. These are people who God has delivered. These are people who God has rescued. Went to Aaron and said, make us gods. <laughs> ah, yeah. But why did they say what they said? Moses was delayed. Ah, they are missing it. Gods were initiated. Because of a spirit called delay. That was powerful. Gods were initiated because of delay. False gods were worshipped because of delay. Delay is spiritual. Delay can cause people to worship other gods. Delay can cause people to neglect God and forget about God. Delay can cause people to move away from God. Do you think God wants you to move away from him? No. Do you think God takes pleasure in your suffering? No. Do you think God takes pleasure in your sickness? No. The devil is a liar. It is more spiritual than you think. Ephesians 6, 12 declares, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities. Powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness. They are entities that sponsors certain results in people's lives. I don't know if you guys understand. It. I hate delay. You can meet the right people at the right time. But delay can fight your time. And everyone around you will be getting what you are actually applying for. Mm. But when it comes to you, you hear, unfortunately, the space is full. Mm. Yet you came with these people at the same time. Mm. Everyone is accepted. Everyone is given an opportunity. Everyone thrives mm. and moves forward. But when it comes to you, there must be something wrong. Mm. And you think it's normal. Wake up from your sleep. Wake up from your sleep. There are people who don't work hard as you do, but they are thriving. I'm not comparing your life with other people. I'm showing you that at the end of the day, it is not so much about what you do. It doesn't come down to what you do in a sense of some of you, you work hard like an elephant. Yet there is somebody who does not work. Yet they are eating like an elephant. You eat like an ant. Some of you are gifted and anointed, but with nothing to show for it. 
You are a good singer. Only you listen to your music. Yet somebody who can sing as good as you and as good as you can sing, people are listening to their music. You don't have anakazo. You have delay. You don't have compelling power. You have delay. You have the gift. And delay is dancing on the gift. Your gift has become a platform, a dancing platform for delay. You know you are destined for greatness. You know you are chosen. You know you are anointed. You know you are called. But delay is refusing you what belongs to you. You are a man of God. You are seated there. You are looking at me right now. You are like, I'm anointed more than this guy. How come thousands of people are watching him? I'm anointed more than this guy. How come people, millions of people follow him on TV and all these platforms? Delay. And you might be right. There are people who are more gifted, more anointed, more brilliant. But you look at somebody who's not as gifted as them will be thriving. Mm -hmm. Them working like a donkey. Who have you sinned against to deserve this suffering? You have no peace. You fix the garage, the window breaks. You fix the window, the door breaks. You fix the door. Something, something always has to be going wrong. You don't make progress. I don't know if that makes sense to somebody. You are dealing with the spirit of backwardness because delay when, you, when, when delay is operating will deploy backwardness. Stagnation will even deploy anti-progress, deploy lack. Sometimes people are dealing with the wrong enemy thinking the enemy is poverty. The enemy is delay. Because once you get that job, you'll eradicate that poverty. <laughs> so delay is fighting you from getting that job from getting your business going, from executing, from finding favor with men. Amen. Clients are not coming. Delay is fighting you. David asked God and said, how long? Meaning there is nothing wrong with you asking God, how long? For how long? And on your behalf today, my heart is crying, how long? I want people to be in one spirit with apostle today. This thing of you take a taking and be everywhere, caught up between two opinions, it ends today. Yes. You must be sober today Amen. because we are going to pray. Yes. We are going to pray. Yes. We are going to pray. Yes. If there is a man to pray, yes. there is a God to answer. Yes. And nothing beats pray. Yes. Nothing beats pray. Yes. Nothing beats pray. Yes. I don't know if you're hearing it. Yes. Nothing beats pray. If you are not praying, you have become a prey to the devil. I said it and I'm going to say it again. Once you combat this spirit today, make sure that you have what I call a prayer plan in your life. In the sense of a prayer life plan, right? Like you have a prayer plan. I pray this time, I pray this time. I said it, I'm going to say it again. You can't combat this and then go back into your prayerlessness. No, 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 no. One week without prayer makes one week. It's prayer or nothing. Glory be to God. We are not sanctified ceases. We were never meant to just accept whatever comes our way. Amen. Especially where we can see the fingerprints of the devil. Mm. Where we can see the fingerprints of Satan. Mm. Because Satan is an enemy of progress. Mm. He's an EP, enemy of progress. Especially when it comes to the children of God. Mm. Say amen, somebody. Amen. I want us to look into one more scripture. And we pray. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, and we read verse 21. I told you when we started that I'll be there, 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 but it will make sense. Yeah. Zoom, are you still here? 
Matthew 17, verse 21. Let's go. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 21. That is correct. How be it? How be it? This kind. This kind. Goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Now, let's quickly break that down. Please be seated, my daughter. I have five minutes and then we pray. Jesus here is talking to the disciples. He's talking to people who already in Matthew 10, he has given power to. Power to cast out unclean spirits. The Bible says all manner, all sorts of diseases, he has given them power to heal in Matthew 10. And then he sends them out to go and cast out unclean spirits. They came back to Jesus excited that demons and spirits are listening to them. And Jesus said, do not be excited because spirits are listening to you. Be excited because your names are written in the book of life. Then they later on went and cast out demons like they did. Now in Matthew chapter 17, a man brings his child to the disciples were nine because the three were in the mountain of transfiguration with Jesus. And as he brought the child, the disciples of Jesus, men who slept in the same room with Jesus, men who were imparted, not by anybody, but by Jesus, failed to cast out that devil. And as they failed, there were nine, all of them combined. Jesus comes down and he casts out that devil. And after casting it out, they, because they were students, they had a learning spirit, went to the master. Master, how come we couldn't? Meaning they were troubled. They, it, failure was not in their DNA, according to them. Especially when it comes to dealing with unclean spirits. Amen. They did not expect an unclean spirit to retaliate against them. Yes. So they said, but how come? They want to know. Something might have went wrong somewhere. Mm -hmm. Jesus says a statement that is powerful. And I want you to hear me with the ears of the spirit, not with the ears of the flesh. He says, how bid? this kind does not go out except by now let's break that down they have power but not for this kind they have an anointing but not for this kind but where is the secret the secret is in fasting and prayer meaning when it comes to dealing with this these things are in ranks there are some you can cast them out with your bele bele fool and they will hear you. But this kind, they want your spirit alive and your flesh subject to your spirit. And that's when you fast. That only happens when you're fasting. So Jesus is saying, until you fast and pray, this kind, meaning there are kinds, and I want to present to you that delay is not just a spirit. This kind, you need to be aggressive. Ah, you need to be violent. A lot of people think being nice to the devil makes the devil to be nice to them. He does not understand diplomacy. He understands violence. Are we together? Amen. This kind does not understand. Please come out. No, 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 no. How long, devil? How long have you been making me suffer? No. This one understands enough is enough. Amen. Pack your bags and go. Amen. And don't you ever come back. Amen. Number two, this one wants you to fast. You might not be fasting now, which is not a problem. But we still have time. A sermon is not just a sermon for that moment. It's a seasonal thing. There are sermons that unlock seasons. And seasons will unlock seasons. Are we together? Yeah. Oh my God, they are not hearing me. I wish somebody would say, I hear you, Apostle. I hear you, Apostle. I'll give an example on what I'm talking about so you understand and I'm closing here now. Apostle is, is, is getting tired. Watch this. Uncle Peter, yes, Apostle. when you deal with the doors, you need to be able to channel your attitude towards them. Because not all doors are the same. If you approach 
a census door with an attitude of a noted door, you will miss that which is on the other side of the door. Amen. Let me break it down for those that are very slow. When I approach a noted door, I know that I need to use force. But before I use force, I need to twist. I need to turn the knot. And I need to use what? Force. That is a noted door. But now if I go to a gas station, we call it garage. If I go to a, a gas station, which is a fuel station, there are sensors though. Nowadays, even in the malls, shopping malls, there are sensors though. I cannot go to the mall and see a sensors door and approach it with the mentality of using a force. They will think I'm mad. They will think something is not right upstairs. But a sensor's door will have to sense my presence. No force required. I, know, I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. I just have to be what? Close. So my proximity there determines if the door is going to close or to open. Or to remain closed, so to say. So now I just need to be what? Close enough. There are certain things by your presence, they scatter. There are certain things you use force they scatter. Yes. But there is another door called coded door. This one, no matter how strong you are, no amount of force can open it. It needs a code. Code, brothers and sisters, C-O-D-E, code. It's a coded door. You can be there for 24 hours. The door will sense your presence, but the door will not bow. The door will not open. You can call other brothers and sisters to stand next to you. The door will not sense your presence. Why? Because it's a coded door. Meaning without a code, you will not have access to that which is on the other side of the door. When we deal with things of the spirit, you need to know what kind of a door is this. <laughs> Delay needs force. <laughs> the spirit of poverty needs a code. That these are two different things. When it comes to poverty, when you deal with poverty on its own, you need a code. That is principles coming in. Because all the ability is locked in the principles. Are we together? But now when you deal with the delay, ah, <laughs> Ah, you are not hearing what I'm saying. Malandre heveska di jala bahaya, melehosa bahai, kura bahanza. Somebody is commenting. He is saying, "I have never had such a powerful sermon in my life." I don't think it's a powerful sermon, so to say. I just think God is talking to you. <laughs> there are so many powerful sermons. If you can go online, you will find them. A sermon can be powerful, but at the end of the day, it has to come down to, is the sermon for you? Because when it's for you, you feel it. You know it. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why we have so many men and women who are using Cash App and all these different platforms giving. Why? Because there is something in them that says, you know what? This is my time. Amen. And force now, when I say force, I'm talking about everything. You, you know, we can be praying and you go into a worship mode. We can be worshiping and you go to a praise mode. Worship is not singing. Actually, singing comes after worship. <laughs> you can be a singer and not be a worshiper. <laughs> Glory be to God. So I'm not talking about singing here. We can be here and the Lord says, you know what, to break this spirit of delay. Do this. And in you following that, that spirit will be broken. And when God speaks, don't refuse him. Amen. It's one thing when apostle speaks. When God speaks to you about a certain matter at that moment, don't use excuses to, to counteract. That might be your only way out. Yeah. Yeah. Glory be to God. So when God speaks to you, I'm not talking about anything. God speaking to you. 
Right now, God can say to you, right now, forgive somebody. <laughs> you are joking. God knowing that they are the ones who wronged you. And you know they are the ones who wronged you. And right now, God says, forgive them. But because there is what we call pride. Pride will start ministering to you back. And so you can't. They are the ones who did this. Yet, that was your only way out. Not every problem is subject to prayer. Sometimes in prayer, God will give you a solution. Because prayer will release your solution. And your solution can be wisdom. Your solution can be giving, sowing. I don't know if they are in, they're understanding what I'm saying. And it is in that now that you are able to hear God and follow suit. God is saying, release your mother. You are like, no, you don't know what that woman did. You need wisdom when dealing with this spirit.